Now it's time to ask the real question, which is, how far did it go? How far did the home run travel by the time that it hit the ground? And so that question, how far did it go, that's a question about we want x. Okay, but there's going to be a few things uh, that we have to, to do in the, the intermediate before we can get to that. Because if we look at the equation for the x position, um, we can say, well, uh, x equals x naught plus b naught x times t. Well, let's see if we know that all that stuff. We know um, x naught. We're just calling that zero, right? So if, if I'm going to draw, I could draw my axes in here. I can say, well, we'll draw one axis here and then the other axis at the ground. Not to scale because um, Aaron Judge does have legs, but we can call our x and y axes there. So then our x naught is just going to be zero, and then our y naught. We were told in the problem um, that. The ball is one meter above the ground when he hits it. Okay, and we got the same um, starting conditions. The, the velocity has a magnitude of 52 meters per second at an angle of 18.9 degrees um, is the launch angle. And we have our uh, initial velocity components broken down uh, as we did in previous problems. Okay, so we want to know x. We know v naught x, but we don't know time. So the question is, how do we figure out time? Well, all of our uh, kinematic equations involve time. So we have to uh, think a little bit about what does it mean uh, when we say how far does it go? What do we know at the ending point? So let's draw a more zoomed out picture. Right, so we've got our ball that is hit from here. It's going to take a parabolic path and then eventually uh, hit the ground at some later time. Right, so what we know, what it means to hit the ground is that the final y is equal to zero. We don't know anything about the velocity uh, at that point. So the x component of the velocity is a question mark. The y component of the velocity is a question mark. The time that it takes to get there is a question mark. Right, so all those things are don't know, don't care, but we might need to use them to get what we do know or what we do want to know about, which is x equals question mark. That's our target. Okay, again, uh, we have our acceleration is going to be negative g, because right, acceleration points down. That's the acceleration due to gravity throughout. And um, we know our uh, initial velocity components uh, and our initial position. So we know everything about the initial. Now, a lot of times people are going to fall in the trap and say, uh, isn't v equals 0 at, uh, at the point that it hits the ground? And this is a common mistake. But... The projectile motion describes the motion of the ball while it's in the air. So if you wanted to know what's the velocity of the ball when it hits the ground, what you're really asking is how fast is it going just before it hits the ground. Once it hits the ground, there's different physics going on. We don't know how to describe that. Right? So it would be like saying, saying that the velocity is zero uh, when the ball hits the ground would be like saying, well, if you were lying on the ground there and the ball hit you in the face, that it wouldn't hurt. That's clearly not true. Right? Uh, you, know, you might be able to catch a home run ball, uh, probably sting your hands a little bit. You definitely don't want your face there. Right? So the ball is definitely moving just before it hits the ground. Okay, so we want to know x. We need to find time. Uh, we can't use either of the velocity equations to help us because we don't know the final velocities. So we need to use the information that we do know, which is the, um, about the y position. Right? And I'll put over here y naught is equal to 1 meter, uh, x naught is equal to 0 meters. Um, and we know our initial uh, velocities also. Okay, so we can, that tells me that I can use the uh, position equation for y to solve for time. So y is equal to y naught plus b naught y times t plus 1 half a t squared. Okay, so I know everything in this equation except for time. And time appears in two places in this equation, uh, and one of those is squared, so that means I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. So before I do that, uh, I like to cross out anything that's equal to zero. So in this case, the final position is equal to zero. And then um, to use the quadratic formula, we need to put it in the order that mathematicians like, which is uh, highest order first. So that's 1 half at squared plus b naught y times t plus y naught. And I can label these as, so this coefficient is my capital A, this is my capital B, and this is my capital C for the quadratic formula. Right, so the quadratic formula tells me that time is equal to negative b, which in this case is v naught y, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's v naught y squared, uh, plus um, 4 times our capital A, which is 1 half acceleration, times c, which is y naught. And that's all going to be divided by 2 times capital A, which is 1 half a. Okay, so um, simplifying that a bit. We've got negative v naught y plus or minus the square root of v naught y squared plus 2a y naught all divided by 2a. And then I can plug in my known values here. So that's going to be negative 16.8 meters per second plus or minus the square root of 16.8 meters per second quantity squared plus 2 times, now remember g is negative, or sorry, the acceleration is negative g, so it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared times one meter, which was our y naught, and that's all divided by two times, no, not two times, just negative 
meters per second squared. Plugging in those numbers, very careful not to mess up the plus and minus signs. I get time is equal to zero, or sorry, negative zero point zero five nine seconds, and time is equal to three point four eight seven seconds. Okay, and I'm keeping extra sig figs here uh, because this is an intermediate calculation, so I don't want to throw away any information yet. Now, sometimes it's a little bit takes a little bit of thought to figure out which time do we care about, but uh, one of these times is before the problem even starts, right? The negative number, so that doesn't have any physical sense. So that tells us. Uh, in this case, it's really easy to say that the time we want to use is 3.487 seconds. Okay, so that's how long the ball is in the air from the time that it's hit till the time that it lands. Uh, and now I can say, okay, what was my real question? My real question was the distance in the x-direction. And that was, um, we can use our kinematic equation for the x-direction where there's no acceleration. Now I know everything in this problem again, uh, starting at, we're calling our x0 equals 0, so I can just... Uh, get rid of that term. And so v naught x was 49.2 meters per second. And then we are multiplying that by the time that we just found, which is 3.487 seconds. And that gives us a distance of 171.6 um, meters, which with significant figures, we really only started with two. Um, so I should say 170 meters, which is about 563 feet. Now, the official number that was given uh, by Major League Baseball is 440 feet. I've never really known how they measure that. Um, clearly, the ball, uh, if you watch the, the video of this home run, the ball lands in the upper deck, so it doesn't get the chance to actually land in the ground. Um, but also, there's other things that, you know, the, the ball is not truly in free fall because uh, air resistance is important for baseballs. Um, so that might make somewhat of a difference as well. Um, now, another thing that, that you might have said was, oh, couldn't I have just done this really simply, right? It never asked me for the time. You know, did I have to do that immediate step? There's this really nice uh, thing in the textbook called the range equation. I don't know if our textbook uh, even names it that. Can I just use that? Uh, it tells me the distance that, that the uh, projectile is going to travel. And the reason why I don't even know what it's called in our book is because I hate the range equation. The range equation uh, is a one-trick pony. It works only if the projectile lands at the same height that it was launched. That's a very specific um, situation, right? So, like something that is launched from the ground and lands on the ground again. Um, that's not even the case for, for baseball. Even if you're golfing, um, you know, part of the, the fun of golf, I guess, is that there's different elevations on the course, right? So it's going to land a bit higher or lower than where you hit it. So, um, you know, this is a very uh, limited application, and so you need to be able to, to solve a problem more generally. Um, so, unfortunately, yes, you know, you do need to, to solve for that uh, intermediate time um, in order to answer the question. Now, the reason why in this problem the, you found the time from the vertical direction is because that was what we knew about. We knew where it starts and where it lands. We didn't know the horizontal direction. If you had a different problem, say in the homework, where you knew the starting and ending position uh, in the horizontal direction, then you could use that to get the time and uh, use that time to solve for um, the vertical position. Your film is now ready to be shown.